Hello, I think it's recording. Um, I'm, I just got a new gadget I'm trying out, and I'm outside, obviously. And I was thinking that my the inside of my apartment is kind of boring, um, but at the same time, it's kind of nice having the privacy. I was walking by one guy. Uh, this wasn't even on. He's just uh, I just said hello. He says hello, um, and then he covers his face. Says, "If you don't mind, please don't point that at me." <laughs> and <laughs> I apologized. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, the first thing you think of as a YouTube blogger, which I'm not, this is my first time being outside my place, but is that it's going to be embarrassing. And you're like, oh, I'm being paranoid. No, you're not. People are sometimes thinking, oh, crap, <laughs> there's some idiot with the camera. <laughs> right. Anyway, so um, I wanted to, of course, just, well, talk about, um, update on my Korean a little bit. Um, and this video is... I have no idea how long it's going to be, hopefully not too long. I'm going to try to not talk too much, but at the same time I don't do much video editing, so um, we'll see. <laughs> and uh, by the way, if you don't know, this is, um, I'm in Arizona, and behind me, what you see is a, we call it a wash, it's a, a dry riverbed, and there's actually a river in it, you can see plants there. <laughs> um, there is actually a river of water in it uh, flowing through there about two weeks out of the year maybe it varies and it's a real it's really nice when there is water but not too often anyway and I'll, also this is where I go jogging yeah so uh, regarding Korean um, this week I think was pretty good I've been uh, doing Anki they, I've, I'm really enjoying the uh, vocabulary deck I have using the uh, Japanese um, well, it was published by a Japanese company uh, for topic, and I'm up to about 400 words, I think, in the deck. I'm adding them pretty quickly, of course, because most of them are review, so typically you want to add maybe 10 to 15 new uh, uh, cards, sentence cards or whatever, or vocabulary, uh, a day to Anki, but I'm doing usually actually about 25 plus, up to 40, and it's going fine because a lot of it's review. Not all of it is review, and I need the review because I don't, uh, my immersion, as much as, I, <laughs> as much as I try, is not all that effective for keeping, um, refreshing my vocabulary. I don't do any speaking. I kind of think that if I did do speaking, I know that you know, that's not the, how the MIA method generally works, but if you do do speaking, you refresh the vocabulary that you're learning probably pretty often because, um, you're going to be reusing that vocabulary, having similar conversations a lot. So that's kind of good, but at the same time, not the best way to um, to expand your vocabulary and uh, as much as possible. So, and and I'm not in Korea, so it's a little inconvenient. Anyway, um, my last video, I was talking a bit about how it feels a bit discouraging to uh, just sit there and watch um, a K-drama or just Korean YouTube without subtitles and unless it's like a, a, something I've already seen I generally will not understand anything um, that is going on or not very much um, of course you can get the action you can kind of pick some stuff up but based on the language I'm not getting very much at all just the most simplest of things and I kept thinking about it, and I, my my determinate my conclusion is basically that um, watching, um, just doing that kind of immersion at this point is probably the worst <laughs> practice I can do. It's definitely better than nothing, and listening to the language is something you will have to do. And basically, I think it's something I should kind of get in when I'm doing something else. Like if I'm driving my car, maybe I can listen to some Korean or doing some chores, but um, I really shouldn't, I don't, at least I don't think it's gonna, it's something I should really push to do every day as a, like, kind of like doing your Anki reps. I don't think it's that important. Um, Anki is great. Now I was also thinking about what I am trying to do is to do link as much as possible, because reading, um, I, I know the more I read, the better I get, even though I'm going so slowly right now. And this, I don't know what the best angle of this camera is. 
anyway um I feel like with Link, it's I, I kind of feel, on one hand it feels like I'm going so slowly that I'm not getting the, the the kind of repetition I need because I'm only reading a few pages a day. It seems um, I don't know exactly, and I know, but I also know that the fat, the more I read it, just the better it's going to get. Um, but doing Link is kind of I don't it's not an ingrained habit for me the way Anki is. Like today, I woke up, I did Anki, and I got it was like 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Um, I have the day off today, so <laughs> anyway, the uh, first thing I did though, it's like I got it. It's the first thing on my mind. It's like God do Anki, and uh, what, sometimes you kind of don't look forward to it. Sometimes you do look forward to it. In general, I like it, um, although it's kind of a chore. It's like going to the gym or whatever. It's a, definitely a habit, but not always something you want to do. Link, on the other hand, is not built into uh, my routine as much, so it takes a lot more to sit down and do it. Is uh, Generally, it's kind of something I do before bed, and um, it's not—it's not so consistent. Uh, I'm one, I was kind of thinking today with the day off, I would get so much done. But in fact, I'm going to turn around. Oh, lost you. Let's see. Uh, is it looking at me? Um. Yeah, so I completely lost my train of thought there. Um, I guess, well, on one hand, I'd like to make Link more of a habit, but on the other hand, I'm also thinking because Anki is such a great habit for me, maybe just do, maybe doing over an hour a day wouldn't be such a bad thing because I would do it. And uh, maybe. <laughs> Nah, I think I should just somehow get myself to do more Link, uh, just more reading. Uh, Harry Potter is going very well. I'm on, I think, uh, chapter 25 out of 32. In theory, if I busted my butt this weekend, I might finish it. I'm going to go home and do it. Um, well, see, one thing, though, is that uh, I have limited time, and like tonight I want to go running, and uh, that cuts in a lot to potential study time for me. But I will be out here tonight after the sun goes down. It's like 100 degrees. Holy crap. Um, and I wonder how... You might be looking at like a shadow on my face. Oh well. This video was a learning experience for me. Um, oh, and uh, lastly, uh, I saw a... Uh, of course, I watch a lot of YouTube. Um, setting up this camera and just playing with this new device was a big uh, time sink today, but um, Luca and Matt. Uh, Luca did an interview with Matt, and it was just excellent. I'm going to put it in the links below if you haven't seen it. Um, if you like Korean MIA, I think you will love this video. Uh, Luca is uh, obviously, or maybe not so obviously, a um, an extraordinary polyglot who has learned many languages for strange reasons. <laughs> he, he couldn't learn Japanese. Um, on one hand, <laughs> uh, if you asked me eight years ago, um, like when as I was a beginner Japanese student, I would have been like, "Oh, of course he can't learn Japanese. It's ridiculously crazy difficult." But yeah, anyway, that comes up a little bit in the interview. Um, you can kind of tell Lucas uh, um, just has a little bit of respect for people who have studied Japanese and someone like Matt who has taken it to the high level, which Luca, when he studies a foreign language. Maybe not every foreign language, but he definitely appreciates getting to a very high level, uh, near native competency, and that uh, I think that made for a much better interview. And it made me think a little bit about my own goals. Generally, um, B2 is my goal. Um, my the I've studied two languages pretty a lot: uh, German and then Japanese, and Korean's kind of. Until I hit a B2, I don't really count Korean as a language. Um, but um, uh, with German, I mostly consumed media. I read countless books and listened to a lot of uh, radio. Um, and I, I, my, my vocabulary from reading may be close to C1. I mean, it was just, I had a really good vocabulary from reading. but And I could talk, for sure. But at the same time, I got... Very little practice talking, speaking, so 
uh, I would say that I would definitely not pass a uh, C1 uh, proficiency test. Um, I, may, I, would, I would probably have some parts of it that I do well and basically some reading parts, but that's it. I went out if I would do well, I just would pass <laughs> those parts. Um, yeah, so my German was a B2, and I'm happy with that. I mean, I kind of feel like, well, based on, this is my individual self, based on my own abilities, yeah, it's like I kind of think to myself, how, what would it take for me to get beyond a B2 into a C1? And it would take a lot of time, a lot of time and effort, because it's, it's very difficult for me, because the pronunciation, um, I think, is a big part of moving beyond, uh, not just the overall, just like vocabulary and grammar, but pronunciation is a big part um, of moving into the C1, C2 area, and they kind of discuss kind of the benefits of reaching that level, namely that with Japanese, Matt can talk to a Japanese person, and within like two words, like the first thing he says that comes out of his mouth, the uh, person he's talking to just feels right away that this person speaks Japanese, I can just be myself, I can be natural, I don't have to hold back. And for me, that's not the case. Um, people start off, when they talk to me in Japanese, they'll start off really great in themselves. Then they kind of figure, I mean, I am, I'm very confident, so they'll kind of figure, oh, wait a minute, this guy does speak some Japanese. And they'll kind of let that down a bit, but they don't, I don't, they don't bring it down totally. They're still grading themselves somewhat. And they're still thinking a little bit like, maybe this expression or maybe this will be hard for him to understand. I can tell, which to be fair, um, there's probably some truth to that, but at the same time, I would so much prefer that they did not limit themselves, that they would um, just be natural. That would push me to, to a higher level. And that was a really frustrating, hugely frustrating thing for me as somebody who was living in Japan, um, studying Japanese as hard as I could. And just uh, when I wanted to go, of course, and uh, engage with uh, native Japanese speakers, there was this kind of barrier um, where they wouldn't, I, I felt like they weren't giving me the, um, the full Japanese experience. <laughs> and if I studied tones and did what Matt does, um, which uh, Steve Kaufman is kind of against, um, then um, he or doesn't really value so much. But if I did that, perhaps then would it be a better experience? So I don't know. I think if I wanted it, 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 it we'll see. With my Japanese is, is a B2, uh, definitely B2. Um, if I want to take it to the next level, then I just study tones uh, or uh, pitch accents, I suppose, and really try to hit that. And then uh, that would get, that would probably get the uh, most immediate increase in my Japanese. But I'm not studying Japanese now. It's some Korean, some of the time. <laughs> and I'm still focusing on Korean. I would like to get my uh, um, Korean up to uh, around a B2 level if I could before moving on to improving other languages. I definitely want to be working on improving one language at a time. Um, I don't want to spread out. It's maybe okay for me to speak Japanese or maybe even read a book in Japanese, but not try to specifically improve my Japanese per se. Uh, I think that would um, hurt my Korean too much and until it hits a B2 level, that's not something I want to do. Yeah, so, okay. Um, and the camera's going crazy again. <laughs> um, that's everything I wanted to say. I know I was rambling. Um, uh, if you liked it, like it, and I will see you in the next video.